Um, Tamaris, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't tell. Um, all right, well, hello, everyone. Just um, trying to deal with the audio situation here. Um, so this is uh, Paul Price. I'm excited to be talking to you today about uh, 2015. This is a, a really big year for us at the, and for the profession. Uh, there's an awful lot going on in, um, in and around uh, professional circles with with architecture so uh, serving as a kind of a forefront of strategic planning of uh, good decision making of technical uh, strategy and capability of business strategy and capability and uh, this year ice has been able to uh, put together a number of programs and a number of uh, components that uh, that I think are really going to help change uh, not so much just ice but really how the profession functions we from We've spent a lot of years building the infrastructure of a profession, um, but there's some things out there that have remained problems for our field. Uh, I just came from uh, any, uh, a number of different organizations that have joined as corporate members, which the Americans will talk about but, uh, a little bit, but um, you know, all of them are still facing certain problems uh, that we've seen in the industry for many, many years. In fact, I was just on the uh, a call with Jeff Scott, who uh, many of you know is, is one of the foremost thinkers in business architecture. He used to be a forester, and they've seen similar uh, kinds of trends that we do, um, and similar kinds of roadblocks to the success of the profession. And uh, you know, this year, uh, I'm very happy to say, is a year that we're dedicating to solving problems for members, um, solving problems for practicing architects. Uh, we've Spent about, we spent about a decade building out um, the the infrastructure, the body of knowledge, the best practices, and those kinds of things. But uh, this year, I'm really happy to say we're, we're taking certain challenges head on that we haven't before. Um, my goals for the organization this year are uh, much more in line with accomplishments for practicing architects than they are just organizational goals. Um, we, we are realigning our communities of practice, we're realigning our contributors and our thought leadership uh, to helping to better understand the, the practice of architecture as it stands today and what is best practice, what is working practice, what are the things that are going to drive us forward. One of the things I've seen uh, too much recently and too much over the last few years is a kind of consistent rehashing of the same tried kinds of practices. Uh, you know, enterprise architects are going to model the enterprise. Business architects are going to model a business practice. Um, the software architects are going to be the senior, most technical lead. Um, the, the, these kinds of things that haven't worked in the past are still being retried. I'm seeing enterprise architecture teams on their fourth fifth and sometimes even sixth iteration of, of, of practice where they built an enterprise architectural practice and had to replace it uh, at some later date because it failed. Um, the solution architect uh, numbers are a little bit better than that. There's not quite so many of those that have failed. Um, but the, the, the number that keeps popping up in these sort of EA failure rates is somewhere around 40%. And that seems to have stayed stable over the last 12 uh, to 15 years. The thing that we want to do is focus on this year on real accomplishments that can be measured against the practice of architecture and put our programs behind that practice. And what I'm looking for are members, our thought leaders, our community leaders, our <laughs> anybody who's got 10 minutes of spare time to help us uh, look at it. How do we actually change those statistics? How do we actually help practicing architects and teams be more successful? And how would that success be characterized? How would we know we accomplished that goal? The other thing, of course, that's continuously uh, frustrating is the notion of understanding and communicating value. 
how do we understand and communicate the value of the practice of architecture, and how do we demonstrate that to non-architects? Uh, all of us know anecdotally as well as empirically the, the value of the field and the value of the, the work that uh, architects do, but it's not well understood, and it has retained a, a certain air of of um, practicing modeling, pra you know, documenting strategy, but not being the fundamental component of driving that strategy. So, how do we build programs that help to achieve and change those goals? And that and, and that understanding of value. What is the characterization of and the true contribution of architects to the top line of an organization? And how do we get beyond the the, the kind of um, the you know, buzzword aspect of this, and really talk about value management. How many organizations that you work with or talk to are actually using value management techniques? How many architects can still can talk about what they contributed to the top line or the bottom line of an organization uh, this last year in 2014? And where is that information going, and how is it being shared? The other component of this is to continue empowering our community. We've had a lot of success through the years with our chapters, do a lot of hard work on our volunteer side and a lot of hard work on my staff side. And I, I believe, and we see significant evidence that ISA has the most robust community model in the world. There are other organizations that have community models, but no one is trying, is putting as much uh, effort and as much success um, in the kind of sophisticated, mature architecture community. Um, and how that touches things like education, the local employer base, the hiring market, the uh, networking opportunities, the thought leadership opportunities in local communities. And uh, the, 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 the fourth thing in terms of this year that we're hoping that we're accomplishing so far is uh, setting the gold standards for architect practice and helping organizations actually achieve the, the, the that's necessary to grow that practice into something more than they can get from an Accenture or from a Gartner or from a Microsoft or from an IBM. The, the goal is to help uh, actually take this information that, that these programs have generated and re-embed that into available, uh, downloadable resources as well as um, some very interesting opportunities for our thought leadership. Uh, in actually working directly with organizations to assess their maturity and to help them grow their practice. Now, when I think about increasing success uh, in architects, right, you know, the number one concern that I have is this continued failure rate, especially in EA and in business architecture to a slightly lesser degree. The EA still has a sort of a uh, industry hype momentum. Uh, but my fear is that the VA initiatives will begin to, to fail at, at equal Rates. Now, I have seen a number of these things happen uh, in, in, in 2014. I've seen over, over around 10 uh, organizations that we know very uh, clearly who are doing great EA work, um, but their initiatives were cut short. Because while the work itself was good in the back end, the understanding of their value contribution was not. And so what we want to do this year is really dive deep into understanding the failure causes for these EA initiatives and be able to generate content that helps to actually hurt those. You know, one of the things that uh, I'm most passionate about is that um, enterprise architecture is not about modeling. It's not about having a sophisticated model. It's about being a fundamental component to strategic execution and being seen and being known and when being authentically valuable in the process of delivering and developing the next generation of strategy. It's kind of the, the old saw that we've started to hear about how uh, you should never model the current state, you should only ever model the future state. And that is kind of to the, the extent of what we're talking about, uh, critical in our better understanding why are these teams failing. Uh, some of it is uncontrollable, some of it's changes in management. Some of it is controllable, though, because the, the teams themselves can practice and be more essential to uh, their organization. But we need to be able to document that. We need to be able to understand that. So we need to be able to look at practical 
down-to-earth approach. It's not yet another framework, not yet another modeling tool, not yet another, uh, you know, even not uh, another value, uh, you know, measurement system. But what are the practices that a successful GA team have? How do they, those ones that are really nailing it, and there are some of them out there, plenty of them, in fact, um, how are they doing it? And what are the, the elements they need? I, you know, somebody said to me recently, um, you know, it's great when you have executive sponsorship. You know, that's sort of like a brainer. Yeah, okay. We love to have executive sponsorship. Everybody in the company would have, love to have executive sponsorship. But the EA teams that succeed do so with or without. Then we can no longer afford excuses such as, well, we would have succeeded, but we didn't have executive sponsorship. These kinds of things we have to get beyond. We have to look at things that are succeeding with and without those kinds of attributes. Uh, to do that, we're developing a series of programs around team surveys. Uh, our, our corporate membership uh, is, is critical to this. We've got our corporate members are now getting involved in architect forums where we're looking at the chief architect levels uh, and talking about that. And I'll be talking about our forums in a second. So there's a number of programs that we're using to drive this. And I will get measurement on this in terms of we're going to be doing a series of beginning of year, end of year surveys on our corporate members, on our membership, and we'll look for opportunities how we can measure a change based on activities and, and uh, items that they've received from us. Obviously, this has a strong community impact as well because we're looking to really dig, dig deep into these kinds of case studies. Um, in addition, our surveys, we just did a recent survey, um, and one of the results of that survey is, this, is a, 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 a drastic increase in the, the demand for reusable assets and strategy, things that they could download, that they could use tomorrow. And that may be everything from a risk management template to an example capability guide for pharmaceuticals to uh, a series of content articles on, uh, on what works when you need to do it. How do you build a good solution architecture? I did a, a Google search on that the other day, and I did a search in our repository, and I was very, very disappointed in what I found, both uh, publicly available as well as from ISA. And this is the kind of thing that can't continue. We need to be giving our members the kind of templates, content, articles they need to understand the roadblocks and be able to use those to measure an improvement in their practice. We've got to get practical, we've got to get reusable, and we've got to get focused on what can help people solve problems and, and deal with roadblocks that they have today. And that's not just in this generic architecture practice. This is about, hey, I need, my company wants to, it wants to do um, you know, a, an information architecture. What does a good information architecture look like? Go. I, have, uh, I, did, I did that search as well, and I downloaded 10 books, and I looked everywhere on the website. You know, I was really, again, very disappointed in this sort of what does a great information architecture look like? Is it just data? Is it just integration? Is it, is it just um, information usage, such as website design? It's a very difficult thing to find in today's world. So we need to solve that problem, and I'm depending on our thought leadership to do so. Um, again, our programs that match up to this are things like the Chief Architect Forum. We've got at least 10 companies now invited, and we're inviting a number of other non-vendor companies to a Chief Architect Forum to help decide and look at what is actually working. We're also delivering a new website, as well as constantly searching for our next generation thought leaders. Um, in the under understanding of value case, again, well, this is a, we, we talk, I kind of covered this already. Uh, one of the things we need to talk about is case studies, best practices. Even We may even be building things like an award program so that we can get better and better understanding of the things that are working in industry uh, and be able to analyze that success criteria and provide outcomes. And in the program area, we get two major areas of, of development that I think all of you are going to just go crazy for. One is an interview series. We are doing a series of interviews with practicing architects, with thought leaders, with vendors, with everybody we can get our hands on uh, that has seen success in the practice of architecture, uh, is doing better work with cloud it, with, at a cost-effective way, in a secure way that, that protects uh, people's privacy and, 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 and data. Um, we're, we're doing interviews on um, is, you know, what does SOA mean anymore? What does mobile strategy got to look like? How does the company deal with IoT? All of these things uh, are becoming a 
fundamental part of our content library. And I think you can see this, um, some of this in some of the case studies and practices that we did at the recent Minnesota conference uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the business architecture focus that we have there. In addition, our executive directors and group event managers have been very successful in helping to derive and provide uh, continuity uh, and operating resources at our community level. For every single organization out there, uh, wherever you're based, and we need to get an executive director or a group event manager at your location. It has provided the chapters that have these resources are starting to massively succeed and get significantly more involved in their local academic organizations and education at universities, in local nonprofit uh, activities, as well as in generating out additional speakers, uh, network opportunities, thought leadership. It's, it's a very exciting thing. Um, as, well, it, 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 as well as providing a connection uh, for the global, uh, for global opportunities. Now, some of these programs I want to mention are the IDABOT, and I'm going to cover this in more depth later. Uh, but we, you know, for a long time, our uh, body of knowledge, which does exist, has existed somewhat implicitly in our training material. We are actually this year extracting that into a explicit, freely downloadable, free for use, wiki driven, blah, 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 add, add all the stuff you want to it. Uh, uh, body of knowledge for the practice of architecture. And this includes a people framework. If, you're, if you haven't heard the capability guidebook, I, I just write highly stressed that we need another 20 contributors, but we've already got 40. And we've got articles coming out <laughs> just left and right. And a whole host of other training modules and micro uh, courses to help support that body of knowledge and that people framework. We're also gathering up engagement models for corporations of different types and different sizes, uh, and as well as a career management guide. And like I said, I'll cover that in some some um, further detail in a little while after uh, towards the end of the call. Um, we've we've also I've also mentioned that we are building out our forums. Now these are things like our Chief Architect Forum, which meets monthly. It is a non-vendor forum, meaning the only people allowed are people who don't have something to sell. Uh, to IT or to, to architect. Um, it's reuse and best practice focus, and it is member restricted and invitation only. So only corporate members and uh, can be in part, a part of these forums, um, the global corporate members, I should say, um, at the global level, while our chapters can begin to instantiate some of these forums at the local level. Um, other possible uh, forums that we're looking at are banking and healthcare. Um, as well as as well as well as other industry verticals and other topic based forums, we are also relaunching our new website, and uh, hopefully I'll get time uh, on this call to demonstrate it. But we will be doing a series of demonstrations now that the uh, uh, the baseline is is put in place, and I'm really excited because it, we, we, there's just so many new number of features, and I, I hate to be feature driven, but you know we always get excited by those. Um, it's got things gamification, personal profile. You can manage your own blog on the site. Um, it's easy to use in terms of chapter management, and it provides a lot of flexibility for future growth. It's also very attractive and kind of easy to update in terms of content. I did want to mention one last thing in terms of direction. Uh, ISA is introducing this year our assessment and services model for maturity. Uh, and center of excellence development. So we've worked now with five to ten companies. We'll be uh, pushing that model. We are uh, building out a series of uh, set up, uh, of, of some you know contractors and, and people that we work with to provide this. Now I should say that we're not going into the full services model. The goal is not to become a huge services company, but to really set a standard by which organizations can can start to judge other services offering. So we have some of the top level EAs in the world um, that, that work with us, and uh, we would love to be able to continue working with them and be able to connect that expertise through our body of knowledge and work with organizations to help drive their success. Um, so we've done everything from uh, baseline um, introductions to or assessment of teams, as well as their maturity as well as helping them develop an engagement model that helps them achieve their value goals. This also serves as a wonderful opportunity to connect our IDABOC into their best practice activities. So 
these are the you know these are my real goals for the year is to accomplish um, some of these uh, these components. I am going to be talking a little bit more in depth about some of our education uh, achievements and activities, as well as uh, do a demonstration of uh, or uh, talk a little bit more about this um, the gold you know the gold standard model um, here in a minute. But I want to turn things over to Damaris so that uh, she had a chance to talk about some of the amazing things that are happening uh, on her side of the her side of the house. Okay, thank you, Paul, um, and thank you, everyone, for uh, attending today's presentation. I want to mention if you um, have any questions, uh, please feel free to submit um, your questions for the question panel or raise your hand so we can unmute you. Um, my name is Damaris Bodhi. I'm the Global Community Director, and um, I will be um, talking a little bit more about um, the changes that we anticipating uh, for the next coming couple to five years and how we want to address those changes in um, providing more value also reflected in our membership model and reflected in more and focused content and what this really means for ISA, for the profession and for our architect members. So the changes that uh, we are anticipating <clears throat> to happening in the next few years, and we already see um, the first results of um, that certification and ISS membership is becoming professional standard. Um, we see literally every day um, new job description popping up that require or recommend the CEDA certification on any of the four levels. Um, I want to highlight um, that the two levels that we see more on job descriptions are the experience-based, CDS and CDP. Um, the second driver is that architect's responsibilities are growing literally every day based on globalization, based on changes in the industry, the technology, just an increasing lifestyle of everyone. Um, and third, the address, addressing the generational shift, so basically uh, from what was the typical typical career path of a technical architect from be, uh, becoming a developer into an engineer uh, to an architect changing into more of um, what we see um, is going, going to happen in, for the millenniums that can consciously make a decision um, in becoming an architect and choose a primary, primary education path, selecting a curriculum at a university and becoming an architect, similar to um, the opportunities that people have that want to become a doctor today. <clears throat> so first is um, how are we going to provide more value? So um, we will continue, of course, increase um, providing more value geographically for our chapters, which um, have the goal of providing lifelong learning through events, workshops, trainings, um, with a weight on certification to address what we just discussed on the previous slide. Um, so you will see more events, more activities um, supporting ISA certification. More chapters are getting bootstrapped in providing and offering, um, ex especially the experience certification, CDS and CDRP. And third, <clears throat> providing opportunities for our members to really make an impact and get recognition, not just for themselves, but also for the IT architect profession. Those programs <coughs> include um, collaborations with academia. We have a number of um, partnerships with universities globally that range from um, universities recommending or providing ISA membership for their students to in integrating ISA's content, course content, into their curriculum and even offering certification. We also will become more active in government programs. ISA is already um, part of a European Union proposal that will provide more education for the European Union area. And those, are, those programs is what we definitely will focus on more. And those programs, again, will also give you an opportunity to become more active. Another focal point is um, charity organizations. So we definitely want to um, expand our commitment um, beyond just the professional network and um, help other nonprofits, um, charitable organizations. 
And <clears throat> as Paul mentioned, the global body of knowledge. So there's a number of um, opportunities for you to leverage what your peers, your architect members create, but also participate. <clears throat> now, with the increasing activities on the chapter level, <clears throat> excuse me, please, as Paul mentioned, um, we have implemented a new chapter model, and I'm going to show you how this looks like. So, in addition to the traditional chapter leadership and membership relationship, we have added chapter staff as part of um, the new chapter model, which means that every new chapter that we establish will have um, chapter staff which can either be a part-time support, we call this group event manager, or full-time executive director staff, staff at each chapter. <clears throat> In addition, there's a, um, a board of advisors that's made up of um, thought leaders um, that give advice to the chapter leadership strategy. Now, our existing chapters that weren't incorporated with that new structure are working towards this maturity level. Um, the value outside of um, the geographically provided uh, locally um, uh, activities uh, will continue at the global level. So we will be focusing on um, providing support for content resources, networking opportunities, more sophisticated programs for our architect members at any specific point of your architect career, just based on the fact that um, every day are changes, there's mergers, acquisitions, reorgs, every single day happening, and I'm sure most of you have been through at least one, if not more. Um, so that's one of our goals, is to continue the journey of your professional growth with you at any point of time of your career. What does it mean in terms of more membership benefits? Um, in 2013, December 2013 to be exact, <clears throat> we launched a new membership model, 3.0, and to date it has resulted in over 150% growth since 2013. And even though we focus on providing benefits for every architect at every point of your career, um, the pricing and the benefits that you see reflected in the membership model um, are based on our members' interest and even more so commitment to be involved with the architect profession and the association. Um, so I want to go briefly over the membership model. So we have the basic free membership, which is free and basic. <coughs> and changes in terms of the full individual membership are um, increased access to a variety of local programs and events. Um, one example is the Chief Architect Forum. Um, that we are looking to extend on a local level on each of our chapters. There's going to be additional benefits for our new website um, that Paul mentioned. We will also introduce a new association management system in addition to that website, which will give you a lot more benefits and um, focused and better collaboration with other members worldwide. <clears throat> We are looking to increase membership benefits not just for each of those membership levels, but also to layer them in terms of who are um, our target audiences. So in terms of corporate membership, benefits are not only focused or targeted at practicing architects, but also at the aspiring architect or extended architect team members, as well as the executive team which means that in addition to when you go on our website, you will see a lot of benefits that are very much focused on education courses, certification, and a number of <coughs> um, memberships for corporate membership. But we also in, have introduced an annual membership engagement plan that um, allows us to engage with the organization's members on an annual basis and not only at um, certain um, events such as training. <coughs> corporate members have access to um, corporate global, like the Chief Architect Forum, but also local programs, um, access to the local chapter activities, and in addition, um, 
uh, with our new website, um, they will have access to private activities and private content on private portals. The next point is more and focused content. So as Paul mentioned before, we are one of our biggest focal points for 2015 is creating more content. But with more content, the challenge is how are we um, steering and, and making our members aware of the content that's focused and critical for you as an individual member. So I should start with the third point. And we have created different user profiles. So with our new website, um, you will get pointed to very specific content that applies to you depending on your interest, depending on um, where you are at your career, and will make um, the search for content um, and resources a lot easier. And we will have different portals and private groups um, that have different focuses. Um, so you can choose and opt in uh, conversations, discussions, and resources of those groups. <coughs> we'll talk a little bit more about the education activities um, after uh, my presentation, but um, what's included is an increased amount of online modules, um, an extensive Idabog updates, um, references for you, case studies, and other repository items. Uh, another focal point for us is co-creation of content by our members. The new website will allow all of our members to upload and share, if you want to, uh, your content, your case studies to those different portals, to those different focus groups, chapters, keep it private or collaborate with members of your choice. We are also looking for uh, subject matter experts who can help us and participate in you choose the engagement level from authoring to reviewing um, to giving feedback to all of our education activities that include courses, content in general, and modules. And the last point is ISAS role and responsibilities. <clears throat> um, there's a lot more to it than those two points uh, very clearly. Um, but our focus for 2015 are those two points, and ISA is uh, the advocate for the global profession. Uh, we will continue extending our reach through collaborations and partnerships. We have a number of very successful partnerships with local computer societies in different countries all over the world, um, as I mentioned before, with universities uh, to pave the career path for the next generation and also other organizations. So you may know that we um, have a, a partnership with O'Reilly for their benefits, and this is one example where we are looking to increase our partnership with O'Reilly and very similar organizations for 2015 to extend benefits to our members. <clears throat> Another point that's very, um, um, very important to ISA is extending our commitment beyond the professional network and giving back. And this can happen, of course, in the most obvious way, which is financially, where chapters and ISA Global will, will sorry, <laughs> raise funds for um, charity organizations, but also awareness and donating time. So we all know like Coding for America, where developers get together and code one day. And we are looking to do something similar from an architect level for charitable, charitable organizations. So I want to pause for a second and see if um, there's any questions, comments, feedback? OK, just good feedback. Thank you. <laughs> um, if you do have any questions uh, or any comments, um, please feel free after this presentation to reach out and email me or email the entire ISA team at contact us at isaglobal.org or if it's community membership specific to dbody at isaglobal.org. Okay, and I'm going to give the presenters rights back to Paul to talk more about education.
Okay, that's one question. I'm sorry, Paul. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry for interrupting you. Um, there's a question in regards to the presentation. Um, so we will upload the recording of this presentation as well as slides to our repository. And before we do so, we're going to um, email everyone who's on this call and um, send you the links and presentations. Okay, back to you, Paul. Back, back to you, Paul. There we go. Um, so real quickly, I want to talk about our education updates. Um, the services and maybe give you a little sneak preview of our new website. So I'm not going to spend all much of time. I uh, it's probably not the the best trait. Uh, here we go. Hold on a sec. And it's it's probably not my best trait. But the truth is, I don't like spending time bragging about what we've already accomplished. I really like talking to you about the stuff that we want to accomplish and get your feedback on that. So I'm going to skip through some of this. Um, uh, unfortunately, Danielle um, Requel, who's the uh, lead of our education uh, initiatives, is um, sick as a dog. What? Why? Is, and by the way, why is that an expression? I've never met a sick dog before. Anyway, um, so we do have uh, 2,500 uh, people that we trained by 2014. I'll just uh, by 2014, um, and we did a lot of course updates, uh, both to core as well as to. Uh, a solid launch of solution last year, and we've had a number of so the, so the students graduate through the solution course. Um, we've very much uh, been uh, bootstrapping our sort of S certification. And for those of you who are in um, um, any kind of uh, in, in, in any location that doesn't offer so that I really highly recommend this as the target hiring point for your sort of entry. Uh, mid-level entry architects positions. Um, so that, as this turned out to be a very solid determinant, uh, determinant of experience without the uh, sort of key is just really, really, really hard. <laughs> um, and there are really good architects who aren't quite yet ready for the CIDAP. CIDAP has been a really good differentiator between folks that, um, that still need more experience to really be put in charge of architecture projects and those that are really ready to take on architecture projects at the solution level. There are, of course, there is a level above that, but if your organization or your chapter or your um, uh, uh, network of, of, of people are considering any kind of um, online or any kind of, of job requirement, I highly suggest that set of S's are great target for that at the experiential level. Um, we also have a great deal of success in standardizing training uh, for companies like Avanade, AstraZeneca, um, REI, Dell, Costco, uh, Microsoft, Stereo, Wells Fargo. We're getting a lot of traction in the market with the training. And uh, while and, and, and the growth and the adoption of the skill set. Um, so it's a, it's a very good time to be involved. And just, I, I, I'm 2015 is going to be our best education year. I can tell you that because of the stuff we're working on. Um, Paul, what we I'm, want to do. Paul, I'm sorry yeah. for interrupting. Um, we got feedback. Can you switch into uh, full presenter mode, please? So the slides are available. Oh, can read. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. sure Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, let me just get this one out of the way. Uh, okay, it's still, it's still showing. Yes. Okay. Uh, So the the really exciting stuff this, this year is the IDEVOC, the continued to the specialist uh, bootstrapping um, uh, example exams, and broadening our education offerings with our third party vendors and par uh, partners. So things like um, Agile, Cloud, uh, some of these kinds of course offerings, um, as well as we are building out a, a series of uh, with the IDEVOC, we're building out a series of the, the micro courses. And I'm actually hopefully going to get a chance to show you one of these as soon as we get through this. So the IDEVOC goal is to update this to uh, version 3.0 uh, of the full IDEVOC and transfer that to an online wiki, which can then be managed by, uh, uh, it's a, and we're already starting to transfer. Uh, we have about 40 of those uh, articles written right now. And this will become the source of our training as opposed to our training being the source of our certification. So the IDEVOC will then be 
managed by, uh, by uh, our, our, our top-level leadership and certified architects, then from that IDAVOC, we will extract our next generation training, and then from the training, we will, we will update our certifications. So it, it, we're really putting ourselves back in a very rigorous model of education management. Um, I'm, I'm actually uh, writing, I actually just finished one, another one of the capabilities from the capability guidebook that we're doing last night, and I have to tell you, it's a very satisfying process even to work on it, uh, and we hope to be able to publish that by the middle of this year, the full piece. Um, we're even considering having that be a book that people can buy along with their membership uh, from kind of an Amazon publishing or that kind of activity. Um, we have a whole bunch of training partnerships that are working really well. Uh, ATB out of Asia, DSK in Sweden, Irish Computer Society, as well as looking in South America, South Africa, and Australia. We've had a number of different organizations just join corporate membership in those areas, and it's, it's, it's a good time to be growing that. We're also uh, teaching more of our uh, human dynamics courses, diving into more human dynamics activities there, as well as teaching uh, some of the TOGAF activities and trying to adapt some of TOGAF to some of our more practical people-focused activities as opposed to this sort of big TA framework, uh, but, but, but really adapt the IDABOC to be able to use both, uh, which you can do right now, but you use both kind of independently, and uh, we're, we, we want to see people that are using TOGAF be even more successful by increasing the quality of their people within that process as opposed to just depending on the TOGAF process. Um, We've got courses going on in universities, uh, as, as, as Maris mentioned, and um, the significant focus on course uh, updates. Now, in the item of vision, just coming back to that, the, the goal here is to, to, to take our item to a much more extensive downloadable resource for organizations. The first one is an updated take, uh, capability taxonomy. Now, this is the, the structure and the relationship between the capabilities that an architect has to possess, as well as the specializations, and the definitions of those skills. We're taking that to the next level, and I can show you uh, that here in a second. Um, we're taking that to the next level by bringing together a capability description, and I'm just going to put this up real quick. Uh, here's the one, I'm just going to show you the risk management capability that I uh, just, and this is just draft, so, uh, you know, forgive any mistakes that you see, but oops, sorry guys. So in risk management, we have it's a full description and definition. We have an overview of the capability as well as include things like the ISO standards related to risk management. Uh, we define its relationship to architecture, including each of the different um, functions and capabilities where architects interact um, and describe the skill or the, the activities of architects within the uh, primary areas of risk management, uh, including a focus on how enterprise, solution, business, and all of our other specializations interact specifically with that. We then kind of we begin to catalog, catalog proven practices. Now again, these documents are meant to be somewhere around five to ten pages, so it's not meant to be fully we're not writing a risk management book yet, <laughs> but but really to help people understand what they need to know and what the skill is and how it applies. We then delineate each of the sub capabilities and, uh, in that capability. So there's things like the, how to set up a risk management organization, um, how to do risk identification, and uh, how to do things like risk assessments, as well as um, risk mitigation. And then we provide resources and templates that people can use uh, as a part of this function. Now, you'll see in each of these areas, we also provide uh, something that I think is even one of the most powerful components is the learning objectives within each of those skill areas. So if I'm a set of foundation, then I need to understand things like risk classification schemes. I need to know what they are. I need to be aware of risk identification tools and techniques. Whereas if I'm a set of specialist, I need to be able to risk lead risk identification activities, at least at the project level. I should be able to catalyze and characterize, catalog and characterize risks associated with project impact. So each skill, and there's 81 skills in our total capability model, each one of those skills will have one of these. It will be on a wiki that's navigable, and you'll be able to download it for your organization and adopt it. Um, on top of that, we're building out 
a whole host of other elements to support that. Things like educational reference guides, framework reference guides, things like you know, TOGAF reference guides and mappings, SOPIA Plus mappings, etc. We're adding the engagement model function, so things like common role descriptions and principles and uh, engagement model reviews, um, as well as looking at career path management guides, so things that HR departments could use, credential management structures, our career path and the different levels that we choose, how to do compensation, salary surveys, job descriptions as opposed to role descriptions, as well as mapping to other industry ser uh, services in those areas. So um, I'm, you know, we've got a lot of work to do here, and I'm constantly looking for uh, additional people that want to become a part of that that activity. So the uh, uh, the IDEBOC should uh, the, the goal is to have the entire thing done by the first week or by the, the end of the year. The uh, capability portion of the guidebook, which is arguably the the most uh, a powerful immediate deliverable should be done by mid year, um, and then on top of that, we're going to be building a series of. Um, I'm just going to skip past these. Uh, a series of online modules to support each of those. So for every single one of those capabilities, we're going to build somewhere between one and three 60-minute micro courses to help people learn that capability. Now the micro courses won't be available for free. Uh, some of them will be. We're going to try to give as many as much away as we can. Uh, they uh, they will be all micro courses will be available as a part of a gold corporate membership or higher to a corporation and their members, and um, then each one of them individually will be purchasable. So you go buy them for ten, fifteen, twenty bucks, something like that. Um, so this kind of uh, self-paced micro course modules I think is, is something that is something that aligns with the direction of training overall in our kind of uh, new uh, the, the, the trending in the education market and it also makes it very consumable you don't have to take a five-day class you can go take 10 hours online uh, that are based on ex exactly the kinds of things you're working on so that's the goal in the activities in education um, uh, this uh, this time around. And you know, I'm going to show you the services model. Let me show you the first page of that. Um, we have a very exciting kind of services consulting model that we're talking about with this gold standard, um, which is the, the kind of offering assessment, acceleration, and co-delivery, uh, where we actually help work with organizations to set their objectives and scope, their approach, timeline, and service deliverables. Um, and manage roles and responsibilities, um, really build tools out for them with those kinds of activities. So it's it's a really cool uh, kind of uh, service that we provide. And if your organizations are in need of that, you can call us. And if you're interested in helping us provide services, we'd be thrilled to, to hear from you um, about that. And then finally, I just wanted to real quickly show that this is a brief homepage view of the new website. Um, I think you can tell. Now, as you I scroll down, uh, how how cool uh, or how much better it looks than our current site. So this is our homepage. It's very much focused on, you know, ISO leadership, on our programs, uh, etc. And then our secondary homepage is our repository. So, you know, um, this is the area where we have our, our news, uh, interviews. Our, our different uh, content. Let's, see, let's click on the CRM content real quick, um, and you can see we've got you know kind of a full site. It's that's, that's, that's just very attractive and much easier to use and much easier to navigate. Um, we're planning on launching this within February, and uh, you know I just, I couldn't be happier about it. We've got our chapter modules there, all of our training and education resources. Uh, as you can tell, it's a significant upgrade in terms of um, content, uh, navigation, look and feel, all of the good stuff that we've come to expect uh, from nice websites. It's also much more friendly on mobile devices. About 40% of our users actually access our website on mobile devices, and this is a tremendously more flexible there. Um, and then I just want to point to our new association management system, uh, which is uh, has been set up. As you can see, we've got uh, the new look and feel applied to it. Plus, in the back end, it's a completely new system. 
I'm going to just go to, and again, this is a very early day, early day, so don't worry too much about um, all the different pieces. But as you can see, each chapter now has things like blogs, the event calendar, a group directory. There were own forums in each chapter. Uh, you can see, so we have a general discussion forum for each chapter. Um, we have uh, we have the the calendar, uh, which is much easier to navigate. Um, and we have, let's see, there's nothing on there yet because it hasn't been imported. So things like photo galleries, just all sorts of stuff that you can you can see, plus RSS feeds for each chapter, um, featured members, online surveys. I mean, the, the kind of list of features goes on. And we'll be doing a lot of detailed training there, but I did want to bring that up as, a, uh, as, as one of the kind of coolest things that we're working on. Anyway. Um, I wanted to stop and get about three minutes to go and make sure that anybody who had questions had a chance to do so. We don't have a ton of questions here. You can also, if you want to just raise your hand, we can also potentially unmute you if you have any comments or questions. Okay, well, um, our number one goal this year, if there's anything that we want to do, it, it is to tie in our chapters and our thought leaders into these contribution success factor kinds of concepts. You know, getting into the what makes a successful team kind of topic, getting into news that's meaningful to architects, uh, doing interviews, participating in the POG uh, development activities for the body of knowledge. Um, finding additional contributors, um, working up, really helping us build out the, what it takes to be a successful architect, what it takes to be a successful architect team mm -hmm. initiatives. Uh, that's, if there's anything, again, that's probably our number one priority for you. With that, I will say thank you very much. <laughs>